Hey everybody, it's Craig Victor here, and in this video we're heading to Arizona to check out the Tamron 28-75 f2.8 for Sony, and we're going to compare the Tamron lens to the much more expensive Sony 24-70 f2.8 G Master lens. So stick around for this whole video because we're also going to test out the autofocus when it comes to video between the Tamron and the Sony. We're going to have a look at a couple of different landscape images, a portrait image, and then we're going to check the video features. So one quick disclaimer, I'm not a professional lens reviewer so bear with me I basically just took these two cameras and lenses on vacation so keep that in mind now also too this is not a sponsored video I am not sponsored by Tamron or Sony I purchased this lens with my own money before I went on vacation and this is the first time I got to use it and I was pleasantly surprised and I think you will be with the results anyway let's get right to the video all right so we're gonna break this video into four different parts the first part we're gonna compare the Sony 24-70 f2.8 against the Tamron 28-75 f2.8. We're going to compare those two lenses. In the second part, we're going to get a little more granular, and we're going to put both lenses on the same camera on a tripod and do some really close-up comparisons. The third part, we're going to do a video focus test between the Tamron and the G Master lens. And then in the fourth part, I'm going to give you my thoughts on the overall build quality of the Tamron, the value comparison, the good things about it, and the things that maybe I don't like about it. So make sure you stick around for the end for the conclusion. So anyway, in this part, what happened here was I met my sister on vacation. She shoots with the Sony a7R2. That's the camera she shoots with. I brought along the Sony a7 III. So a newer Sony camera, but not as high a megapixel camera. Don't get hung up on that. We're going to look at a couple images shot on the two different cameras with the two different lenses. Then we're going to take both lenses and put them on the Sony a7 III in part two. And then in part three, we're going to have both lenses on the Sony a7 III for the video focus test. Just this first part is two different cameras, two different lenses. Don't get hung up on that. We're going to compare some of the color science between these two cameras, which you might also find interesting as well. Anyway, let's get rolling. So here's a shot of Horseshoe Bend in Arizona. And I'm going to show you my vantage point for this shot. And also, I'm just going to explain this to you. This is Capture One if you're not familiar with it. If you look to the left over here and you look up, you can see that this is the 28 to 75 f2.8. So this will be the information of the lens. If you look down, you'll see the Sony 7M3. That's the Sony A7 III. So that's what this was shot on. If you look at the very bottom, you can see it was 28 millimeters at f7.1. So just some facts for you. So I'll show you my vantage point where I shot this. So you have to get down flat in order to get this shot. Now this is maybe one drawback. As far back as I can get without getting the rocks in the way. And this was the shot that I was able to capture. So not quite the whole shot. And what I mean by that is I'll show you the vantage point that my sister was at and the shot that she got. So here she is using the G Master, the 24 to 70. So she's got about four more millimeters on me. And this was the shot she could capture. So some people say, well, maybe the Tamron's not wide enough. In most cases, it's probably okay. But in this case, I could have used that four millimeters. So that's one of those things you're going to think about is where am I going with this lens in the future? And is 28 going to work for me? If that's the only lens you have, it could be a problem. This is a better shot, I think, because she had a little bit more range. But let's compare how this looks. We're comparing a higher megapixel camera, the Sony a7R2, with a better lens, the G Master 24 to 70, versus the newer, lower megapixel Sony a7 III and the Tamron. So you would think there'd be a huge difference, right? If anything, I like the colors, and just pay attention to the colors, I like the colors a little more with the new Sony camera and the Tamron lens. So sure, the distance, uh, that's a bit of a, a hassle. It didn't look quite the same. I couldn't get as far back. But overall, as far as the sharpness and the colors and the dynamic range, I'm not seeing a huge, huge difference. If anything, I prefer the colors on the Sony a7 III and the Tamron. You think you'd see a bigger difference. Higher megapixel camera, much better lens. Not really. I think it's pretty close right here. So in the second part, now let's go to moving both these lenses onto the Sony. We'll put it on a tripod and we'll have a closer look at things. But before we get to that, I just want to show you a quick family portrait. So I hadn't seen my family in a while. We decided to meet up in Arizona. And we just took some family shots in natural light, like most people would on a vacation. So this was shot by my sister with the Sony a7R II. She was using the G Master 24 to 70. And I'm going to compare this to a shot that I did. So we just sort of swapped out places. I took a picture. And look at the difference in the color. So now this was shot on the Sony a7 III with a Tamron lens. 
And to me, I'm not seeing a huge difference in dynamic range. This is just natural light, but look at the jacket and the shine and the hair and the different highlights and look at the colors and, and just look at overall how this looks. Like, does this look like a pleasing image just right at a camera? And then let's compare this to a higher megapixel camera with a better lens. And to me, the color science seems much better on the Sony a7 III. And as far as sharpness and things like that, I don't see a huge difference between lenses. I don't feel like I need to go and upgrade to the G Master lens just looking at this photo. I'm pretty happy with the Tamron and the type of image that takes. And like I said, this isn't fancy lighting. This was just, hey, stop here. Let's take a picture. Natural light. I think it did a great job. So let's get a little more technical. We're going to go to a tripod in these next series of shots. So this is where we were staying. There was a little bit of a pond there. And I was just focused on these houses across the water. So I took both lenses. I put them on the Sony a7 III. I put it on a tripod. And I just wanted to see how they handled this scene as far as sharpness, chromatic aberration, dynamic range, and all of that. So let's have a look at these images. Again, if I click here, we could see what I shot this at. So you can see here that I'm at 35. So I shot these at different range throughout the zoom lens. Now you will see a wider difference uh, with the Sony again. You're going to see more in the frame. And again, if we go to info here, you could see that this is the G Master 24 to 70. If you look down here, you can see this was at f8. I shot these anywhere from 2.8 to 4 to f8. Of course, it's going to get sharper the higher we go up to f8. Let's just look at maybe something on the lower end because Usually if you buy an f2.8, you hope that it's sharp at f2.8. So let's do that first. All right, so here we are on the G Master, 24 millimeters, f2.8. I'm going to go through the range. I'm not going to really zoom in until we get a little closer so we can examine things a little better. As we get to 70 millimeters, I'm going to zoom in here. And you'll see that it's not particularly very sharp. If you look around this frame, this is on a tripod. It's not super, super sharp. If you could see here... It's okay, but it's not the sharpest image, especially for that price point for a lens. Now let's go to the Tamron and we'll see how that looks. Now if I come over here, you could see that we're still on the Sony and we're at F4. So let's just look at F4 before we go to the Tamron. So again, we're going to zoom in and you would think, okay, F4, it should get a little sharper. And if you look here again, it's still not super sharp. So we're going to switch to the Tamron. And here we are in the Tamron. I'm going to zoom out so you can see this. And similar looking image, but you can see we don't have the whole tree in because we're at 28 millimeters. So you don't have as wide that four millimeters can make a difference. But let's go up to what we had it at. So 75, so a little bit closer with the Tamron. And again, not super sharp either, but very comparable, in my opinion, to the Sony. So let's go back and we'll just compare these two shots. All right, so I wanted to zoom in so you could see this. So on the left, we have the G Master, the 24 to 70 F2.8, the Sony G Master. And on the right, we have the Tamron. And you can see we're a little zoomed in more, about five millimeters more on the long end. Both are at F4. And you can see that as far as colors, as far as dynamic range, as far as sharpness, there really isn't a huge difference between these two lenses. In fact, it almost looks as if the Tamron is slightly sharper if you look at the stairs, if you look at the walls. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get close into the stucco so we can have a look at the corners. So that's the next part of this video. All right, so I wanted to have a look at the vignetting in the corners, so I just shot the stucco wall beside me. And you can see a definite vignetting at f2.8 at 28 millimeters on the Tamron lens. You can see it in the top left, the right, the bottom left and right. But overall, the sharpness looks pretty good. I didn't make any image adjustments. This is straight out of camera, of course, in Lightroom or Capture One. You can make some corrections for some of these things that you're seeing here. And as I'm going through the menu, you can see that there's chromatic aberration. There's also diffraction correction. So you can make some adjustments to modify this. I just want you to see how it looked out of camera. So in the next part, we're going to do the video autofocus test on the Sony a7 III. We're going to compare the Tamron 28 to 75 against the Sony G Master and see if we can see a difference with the autofocus abilities. Let's go to that part. All right, so here's the autofocus comparison. Now this lens is the Tamron. Now watch how quickly this grabs focus. So I grabbed it on the house behind me and now you see it grab my face. So it does a really good job of finding the subject with the face tracking in 4K 
And you can see it's following me as I'm walking, as I'm moving side to side. And I found it very comparable to the Sony G Master, which we'll have a look at in a second. Now, watch out for the G Master when it comes up. It might be slightly faster than the Tamron, but overall for video quality, I thought the Tamron lens looks great for video as well as it does for stills. Now let's switch over to the G Master. Now I move my position a bit, the lighting's slightly different, but just watch the focusing. So we're talking about focusing. You'll notice that the Sony G Master grabs that focus almost instantly. It's just a slight difference between the G Master and the Tamron. It's not something that I'm concerned about, but I think the G Master did beat it a bit for focusing. But considering the Tamron's much cheaper and it's a third party lens, I think it does a great job on capturing focus when you compare it to the Sony G Master lens. All right, so the conclusion, what's better, the Tamron or the Sony G Master? Now let's talk about the build quality. Obviously, the G Master has a much better build quality. The Tamron feels a little plastic in your hands, but the Tamron is a lot lighter than the G Master and it's smaller. So if you're looking for something that's small, compact and lightweight with comparable quality, well then I think the win goes to Tamron in that case, although it is a little plastic feeling. That didn't really bother me at all. Now also too, there's that difference between the 24 millimeter on the wide end with the G Master and the 28 on the Tamron you saw from the video that I could have used a little extra room when it came to that shot. So if you really need 24, then you might want to get a 24 millimeter prime or wider or the G Master 24 to 70. But I feel okay with my purchase because the price difference is huge between the Tamron and the G Master. Now, when it comes to visual quality, I really didn't see a difference in visual quality as far as the sharpness, as far as the color, as far as dynamic range, as far as all the things that you would look for in the lens. I think at the price point, the Tamron is a really great buy if you're looking for an all around zoom lens that's not going to break the bank for Sony. I think you should really check it out. A couple of YouTubers that I follow closely also recommended this lens to me and I'm really happy with it. I think it was a great recommendation from them and I also recommend it as well. Anyway, I'd like to hear your comments in the comment section below. Did you see a difference between the Tamron and the G Master? And what would you buy? Would you go with the Tamron just based on value? I think it's a much better value lens when it comes to dollar for dollar comparison. Anyway, thanks again for watching this video. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification, and you'll get updates as I release new videos every week. All right, I'll see you in the next video.